Hey guys, Dr. Drunk aka here with another World of Warships game for you. We are playing the Alsace, divved up with our buddies Penguin and Captain Planet. We're on loop, it is domination, we are top tier. And as we go to the screen here, you're going to notice this is a ship I haven't played for you guys before. And oh my god, he's in a battleship. Yeah, no shit. Amazing, right? As the game starts, you're going to see that uh, <laughs> there are very few DDs in this game. Captain is the only DD in his Tashkent. And uh, I'm going to preface this by saying that this is a game that happened after a long streak of players doing <laughs> inexplicably stupid, stupid things. I... I uh, Battleships pushing into multiple ships, cruisers, um, broadsiding battleships, destroyers just committing suicide. It, it was a day of some of the worst team play that I have seen in World of Warships in a long time. So, uh, Penguin, Captain, and I are notably salty in this case. As you can see, there's a Chikolov, there's a Saipan. And four battleships per side, a whole lot of cruisers, which is great for the Alsace, being that she is only 15-inch guns. And those 15-inch guns are relatively high velocity, shotgun style uh, rifles that you would see on your typical French battleship. What you get from the Lyon on up is pretty much what the line looks like. Spotted the Ostergotland and target him immediately. He does come to a stop as the Chikolov goes after him. Meanwhile, meanwhile, if you look, I can see I'm pinging the map. Our Pomern is deciding that he doesn't really feel like playing his side. This is an intense pet peeve of mine. Most of you know this. If you watch us on stream over at twitch.tv slash drunkaka, you will know that I have a massive pet peeve about people not playing their side. If you spawn on a flank, you need to stay on the flank. If you don't know how to stay on that flank and effectively play that flank, you need to learn how to do that, not just decide you're going to push toward a different part of the map. You can't win a game by taking two caps. Get some targets on the Amalfi, shots go out here, and I realize, God damn it, I have HE loaded because, of course, it's a French battleship, which means HE is best shell comrade. The Atago decides he's going to push dead center middle, just like I said earlier in the game. Cruisers just love to present broadsides to battleships. Hysterical. Now's when I wish I had AP load, and of course I didn't reload AP early on. So, what do you do? Well, my good old buddy Puddin basically says, you know what? You, lo you fire what you got in your barrels, and then you reload a different ammo. So, 12 guns, shots out on the Otago from 13.5k away. We clip him with 5 shells and set a fire. That does a fair chunk of damage to an Otago. Otago... Still hasn't figured out that he probably shouldn't be there. Even when there's a Cleveland and an Eindracht, a Palmer and a Helena and a Kronstadt uh, working on him and myself. Captain grabs Seacap and he boogies on out of there to go do Tashkent type things. Somewhere around the B cap. Actually, in chat at the time, we were saying, look, I got to turn around. I got to go over to A because we have nothing at A. Captain is going to do the same. Our Palmer, who spawned at A, instead of you know, turning around and going to A, doing what Pomerans do, because Pomeran is actually still a fairly strong ship, especially post-secondary rework. He decided he's going to push into B, and spoiler alert, he's going to die doing nothing. Don't think I had to tell anybody that. Tago dies to the Eindracht. We take shots on the Colorado, which we can just barely see behind the island. We're going to fire by a minimap, and we probably don't get a whole lot of love going on here. That Eindracht is looking mighty juicy, but he is at the extent of my range. Our Eindracht pushes into the cap, just like the Otago. Dies doing nothing. What else is new? Cruisers just... It's cruisers in World of Warships, folks. Reloaded. Colorado is really the only thing spotted. It's the only thing in range. We're going to do a quick little Minimac ping and see if we can manage to get some shots out on him, because any damage is good damage. Spot the Baltimore, can't do anything to the Baltimore, he's deep behind that island. We need to go and reinforce the opposite side. There are three boats on this side, there are four 
of our ships over here and the carrier. We do not need to be on this side of the map. We need to go back to A and try and cut things off. Our Seattle, for some reason, decides it's a good idea to push into B, where every other cruiser has already died. Apparently, the concept of history repeats itself is not something that World of Warships players can understand. Lots of HP on this side of the map for me to work with. And there goes our Pomeran, as you can see, just deciding to push directly into one, two, three, four enemy boats. Seems like a good idea to me. Pomeran was 81,000 life. He's now down to 45,000. We get 17k on the Frederick de Grossa because he is sailing broadside. Note to self, these AP shells do pretty good damage when you aim for upper belt and superstructure on battleships. You're going to see that a little bit later, but you'll also see the stupid penetration power of these guns on display a little bit later as well. Reloaded, looking at the Colorado now, and we're just going to watch our Pomeran die. Well, mini map firing, see if we can get some superstructure pens on the Colorado, get a little bit more damage in here, try and stem this tide. Game is not looking too bad at the moment. It is, we're down two ships to one. We're actually ahead, barely on points. We have two caps to their one. However, our Kronstadt is not going to be long for this world because it's a Kronstadt bow in against five ships. The Helena is trying to open water against five ships. Our Palmer dies to the side pan. Of course he does. Why are we not surprised? We need to help hold this side down. I make a critical mistake here. Freddy is looking directly at me. Thankfully, I don't get punished too hard for it. He takes 11k in return which is a fine trade as far as I'm concerned. Losing about 7k for an 11k salvo, I'll take that. <clears throat> what I want to do here, Penguin is in chat telling me, well, he's actually in Discord and he's telling me that he's going to push into the center. And as long as he's pushing into the center, I can push south and create crossfires because crossfires are the bane of every team's existence. Captain's going to mall cop the middle, see what he can do to try and keep them from pushing back. Minnesota! Big superstructure, takes lots of AP pens, 15k on him. I'm going to look back over my shoulder and see, look, we have an Eindracht over there. We have a Colorado over there. I'm saying to Penguin, guys, anything you can do about that? Penguin's got no shots. He's trying to take out the Helena. There goes our Kronstadt. We're down four ships to one right now. I've got a Minnesota. I've got a Helena. Now, I, I don't realize this at the time, but I'm targeting the Minnesota, and I'm trying to hit the Helena. This explains why I'm not getting any major damage on it. Uh, I don't understand Wargaming's... Our Helena, of course, dies in open water to a Freddy because it overpens or it overmatches pretty much everything. I don't understand why Wargaming's lock-on algorithm has gotten so bad. I don't... Uh, add it to the list of things that Wargaming doesn't do right. Minnesota is on fire. He's actually not looking at me. He's looking the other direction. Only 4,400 there. Baltimore kills the enemy Balti, and that helps to even the score a little bit for us. So now it's only five ships to two. Only five ships to two? And, of course, there in chat, did you all eat glue this morning? Yeah, that's, like I said, we're, we were a little bit cranky after uh, the run of games that we had. Captain's presence forces the Minnesota to turn out. And I fire as I am turning. And I'm going to try and bait that Minnesota to shoot me and turn out at the same time. 5,000 damage there. <clears throat> Captain runs afoul of the Freddy and the Minnesota. Now, you'll see that there's torpedoes out. This play by Captain is about as clutch a play as we can get. <clears throat> I'm telling Penguin in chat, I'm... In Discord. I'm going down south. All right. I'm going to try and get the broadsides of all these battleships. That should give you uh, that should give you a shot or a chance to get shots on them as well. The Malfi kills Captain. The Minnesota is on fire. Little do I know that that Minnesota is also flooding at this point. Oh, look. He's flooding. Now, that Minnesota going down is going to do two things. And, and honestly, it's going to be part of the reason that Captain is kind of a superstar for this one here. Putting that Minnesota down essentially turned what was a four-on-one to a one-on-one -on -one fight right now. The, the 
<clears throat> excuse me, the Ismo is really the only thing here that's a huge threat to me. And because I do have decent detection of 13 2, I'm running concealment on this. I actually now have the broadside of every cruiser on their team. The Ismo, yeah, it's got 16 inch guns, but when it's bow in, it can't do a terrible lot to an Alsace. Can it take out guns? Sure. Can it hit superstructure? Sure. But he's only got six guns, especially if he stays bow in like that. And I have the broadside of pretty much their entire enemy team. So I'll be free to farm here. Between Penguin, myself, and the Synop, this team is heavily crossfired, and they have two choices. They can either turn away. Penguin just clapped the hell in there with that shot. And now this team can either do one of two things. They can either turn away or they can push. Despite being up six ships to three, actually six ships to four at this point, they still are losing on caps. So they have to push into caps, and we're going to take advantage of that fact. You'll notice I point my bow directly toward that Ismo, who is backing up, because that's definitely how you play Ismo. He's prepping to play the Yamato. Haha, <laughs> funny. <clears throat> he's going to be backing up, and I have one hope here. Actually, I have two hopes here. Wichita goes down to the Saipan, and we trade for, I think that was an Amalfi, that our Baltimore has been chasing for most of the game. But in any case, my hope here is I'm going to keep the Ismo's attention. I want to keep the Ismo looking at me as opposed to uh, Penguin's Georgia, because Penguin's Georgia has a lot of hard-hitting power. Those big guns can do significant damage, and with the dispersion, it can do some nasty things. So I want to try and keep him alive as much as I can. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to send it directly for the Ismo. Worst case scenario, I get broadsides, and if I need to, I can ram and trade one for one if I cannot manage to outplay him. But let's be honest, nobody would post a replay where they don't outplay somebody because that's the rules of the World of Warships community, isn't it, boys? Eindrock pushing in, which I, I understand why he's pushing in, but I don't necessarily think that was the way to do it. Should leave it for the Oster to do that work. He gets deleted before my shells even get to him, which I don't know what to say about that. Ismo, for some reason, decides, hey, look, let's go for the drive-by. And what happens now I'm is absolutely inexplicable to me. This guy's going for the drive-by. He decides he's going to start turning out to get his guns up. And watch this number, folks. 67,000 damage. 67,000 damage from five citadels and however many other pens. I don't even... I didn't even look to see how many other pens I got on him. But... Almost full health to zero on the Ismo. If that Ismo had turned bow in to me and just tried to drive by, there's literally nothing he would have been able to do because I, I don't have the penetration to hen his angled bow. And I only have 15-inch guns. The smartest possible thing he could have done would be to actually just bow in and take the ram. That would have been the, the way to trade, but... At this point, the game is essentially sewn up. There's not a lot that they can do to pull this back. Their Freddy, who has three kills, their Saipan, who has three kills, are... Well, their Freddy's on extremely low health and is essentially all but guaranteed dead. Penguin gets him with a long-range shot from downtown. Saipan is the only other thing with any kind of health pool remaining. The Seattle gets deleted the minute he gets spotted, essentially. Uh, the Saipan will, I believe, ends up killing the Synop here. I, I, I gotta hand it to the enemy Saipan. The, the fellow tried quite hard to, to win this game, and I give him credit for that. Uh, got also have to go out to Archkolov. This guy did some work, and, uh... I have to laugh, because even with planes in the air, what you're gonna see next with this... with this, uh... Seattle goes down to Isel, though. Uh, what you're going to see next, the Chikalov, even with planes in the air, manages to dodge the majority of the Osteotland's torpedoes, which, in reality, is pretty damn funny because of how close he is. 
Sure, he's down to 7,900 hit points, but <laughs> the Oster Yotlin just basically lost three quarters of his health, and to be perfectly honest, the game is over, so it isn't going to matter. Of course, I'm a putz, and I did not actually take a photo of the uh, end of battle screen, but we do have one from WoW's replays. 192,500 damage, three kills, six Citadels, all of which came on that poor Izumo. Uh, eight planes shot down, a couple of secondary hits, and a solo cap just to uh, round it off, along with a high caliber award. Good enough for top two on the team. I do remember that as much. <clears throat> because it was on stream, and I can go back and look at it anyway. In any case, guys, we do play all of these games on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash drdrunkaka. Stop by, drop a follow on the channel there. It helps out quite a bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps this channel out quite a bit as well. Guys, it is last call. The bar is closing. You do not have to go home, but you can't stay here. Good night, dudes.